Hey, good day, Pour It Out family. We're Ben and Jody Hughes. It's so wonderful to be with you. You know, the world of the generous gets larger. And as we surrender our loaves and fishes, you discover that your life is feeding the many. Today, you're going to be inspired that God's using you. Come on, are you ready for this? Let's do it. Pour, Pour it, it out. out. G'day Pour It Out family, welcome to Pour It Out with Ben and Jody Hughes. I'm Ben, this is Jody. G'day. Looking lovely as always, and is that lavender would you call it? <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know, anyway. Today we're talking about, uh, well, I don't want to tell you. Jody's already mentioned it at the beginning, but I just want to start by reading you one of my favorite stories from the Bible, from Acts chapter three. Are you ready for this? I'm going to read right from um, verse one. It says this, let me just set the scene a little bit here. Peter and John, they've just been in the upper room. All the disciples are in the upper room in Acts chapter two. The Holy Spirit has been poured out. They've been filled with the Holy Ghost. It's been this amazing encounter, rushing yeah. wind, tongues of fire falling on their head, right? We turn the page and we get to Acts chapter three. The next thing we see, Peter and James, uh, Peter and John, sorry, are on their way to a prayer meeting. Interesting. So it says this, now, Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. This is something that they did every day. And a certain man laying from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms and fixing, that's A-L-M-S, right? And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, hey, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. And then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. Wow. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, he lifted him up, and immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping and praising God. All the people saw it and they all praised God too. Well, I love this story, right? First of all, because this awesome miracle happens. A man at the, the gate called Beautiful, right? He's been, a, he's been a beggar. He's been a cripple since birth. He's, uh, he's about 40 years old. And suddenly he has this incredible miracle happen to him. Yeah. Wow. What an awesome thing to see, Yeah. right? Now, but here's what I want to encourage you with. Here's the bit I want to focus on. I love this. It says, Peter said in verse six, silver and gold I do not have. Yeah. He's like, you know what? I think I, I left my wallet in the upper room, so I've got nothing on me. But what I do have, I give you. Get up and walk, Yeah. right? It's so powerful because you know what happened there? Peter knew what he did have. Mm. It's so important, guys, that we know what it is that we have, what it is that we're carrying, right? Because then, in turn, we can give it away. We can give it away. So I love that. They're like, yep, I've got no money on me, but here's what I have, and here's what I know I have living on the inside of me, and I want to give that to you right now. Yeah, I love this. Knowing who you are, what you carry and being willing to release that into situations, into people's lives. This is it's life changing, not just for you, but for other people. Right. You know, and I love that it says uh, here's what it says. It says freely you have received, freely give. Yeah. Freely you have received, freely give. Now, when I got saved, when I became a Christian, when I met Jesus, I hadn't grown up in church, but you know, I was, I was saved at a camp and I've told this story many times, but when I was 15 years old at this camp and I encountered the love and the power of God. And the next day when I woke up after giving my life to Jesus the night before, I felt free. I felt, I felt so clean and I felt just full of joy. I felt like I could fly, right? I felt light. Yeah. Right. And then this announcement I remember came over the loudspeaker at the camp and they said this. It said, anyone who wants to, anyone who wants to be baptized in the Holy Spirit 
come to the, the wool shed, the barn at 10 o'clock. I was like, man, I don't know what that is, but I want it. I wanted, I wanted whatever was going, right? Well, I went up to the wool shed that day and suddenly as the a preacher began to minister, I saw the power of God in operation. I saw all kinds of miracles breaking out. I saw demons coming out of people, deliverance happening and people getting free. And this is all happening right in front of my eyes. The manifestation, the supernatural manifestation of the power of God. Yeah. And the preacher was preaching what's become one of my favorite verses out of Acts 1.8. After the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall receive power, right? After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. When you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you shall receive power and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Wow. Come on. Wow, come on. Now, not only did I, I hear that verse preached, but I saw the demonstration of it happen before my eyes. And then I said, well, I want it. I want that. Who wouldn't want that, right? And so I went down the front, somebody prayed for me and I encountered the power of God. Again, I had this tangible experience with the power of God. I felt the Holy Spirit fill me and I was like flame on, you know, I just, I felt like I was on fire and I began to speak in tongues and, you know, and so after the camp was finished, I went back to school. So this happened for me in between year 11 and year 12, right at school. Went back to, sorry, in between year 10 and 11. I went back to school the next year. Now, this was my introduction to Christianity. Mm -hmm. And what I had freely received, I wanted to freely give away, right? And so I remember that, that year at school, we saw God move so powerfully. You know, there was miracles would break out just in our school field at lunchtime. Demons would come out of people. Yeah. I remember the very first time was only like three or four months later. Um, I was at a Sunday night service at the church I started going to. And they invited me just to come to the altar and just to pray for somebody. Yeah. And this is a little bit out there, but, but you'll see what I'm talking about, right? And I walked up to this young man on the altar and I just put my hand on him. I said, thank you, Father. And he dropped to the ground. And essentially, he got delivered from this demon. Wow. And you could see it happening, right? Right in front of my eyes. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is what I have on the inside of me. The Bible said that after you, the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power. Yeah. Now that's exactly what had happened to Peter and John in the upper room, right? Acts 1.8, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Those of us who say, hey, we're spirit filled, right? We, we could call ourselves Pentecostals or Charismatics, whatever you want to call it. We're full of the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. We have received yeah. power, right? And then it tells us this, freely you have received, yeah. freely give. Wow, come on. And so the question then be becomes, what do we have? What do you have? Because God's calling us to not just freely have what we have, but to give it away. Right, so, so important. And so friends, I want to just quickly have a look at this in Matthew 10. And I've already kind of mentioned a part of it, but Matthew 10, 7 and 8 says this, Jesus is sending out the disciples now, yeah. right? And he says, as you go, as you go, preach. As you go, preach, saying that the kingdom of heaven has come near. Now, here's what I want you to do. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, raise the dead, freely you have received, freely give. Now, from this verse, we get a clue right here. It's like a description of what we have. When we have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, and when Jesus is sending us out saying, hey, guys, as you go, which is exactly what Peter and John were doing, right? They weren't on TV, right? They weren't at a conference. They were just on their way. They were on their way to the prayer meeting. And as they were going, right, they saw this guy. And here's what they did, exactly what Jesus had told them to do. Mm -hmm. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, cast out demons, raise the dead. So this verse tells us some of what we, it is that we actually have. Of course, it's the Holy Spirit that we have. But yeah. with that, we must have power to heal the sick. Yeah. Jesus commanded us to heal the sick, right? We must have power to cleanse the lepers. Now, I love to think about this twofold, cleansing the lepers, because leprosy is not a huge problem for, for most of us today, right? But I think, well, first of all, it's like skin conditions and anything else that, that you know, anything that kind of makes us socially separate or whatever, because the lepers were, were cast out and made to feel separate. And sometimes even that can just be, 
you know, emotional, people that get, have been rejected. And, and that was my story. You know, I, I'd had so much bullying and things like that. But I experienced that, that cleansing of the leper, so to speak, you yeah. know, because now I was loved and accepted by God. Yeah. Cast out demons. We must have authority to cast out demons. And I want to tell you, friends, you do have yeah. authority to cast out demons. Now, in that story that I just told, I was 15 years old. I hadn't gone to Bible college. I hadn't been fasting for 40 days, right? I've only been a Christian for three or four months, yeah. right? All I did was I put my hand on somebody and bang, this demon comes out of them. They fall to the ground and they begin to get delivered. That's because of what is on the inside of us, right? And we have the Holy Spirit living on the inside. And then lastly, in this uh, same verse, it says, raise the dead, raise the dead. Wow. Don't you love that? It's a command, right? Jesus actually commands us to raise the dead. Yeah, I love that. And it speaks to dead circumstances. It speaks to uh, literally raising the dead. It speaks to knowing that on the inside of us is resurrection power and to give it away, to use it. Right. You know, so this should this really should inform how we react to situations. And, you know, raising the dead, that, that's one of those things when we know what's on the inside of us then if we hear an opportunity that somebody needs to be raised from the dead, we need to go, you know what? I have the resurrection and the life living on the inside of me. I need to go and pray. Or somebody is sick, you know, we need to go and pray for somebody. I remember just recently, uh, we, um, we've recently moved, but in our old house, we had a letterbox that was on, you know, it's like a, a slot in the front door, right? Yeah. And one day I saw the mailman, the postie, right? Walking up to the front door, and he's got a bit of a limp. And I felt like God told me, I need to go pray for him. Hmm. And so as he got up to the thing about to put the mail in, open the door, hello, you know what I mean? And he's like, well, and I said, I'm Ben. And he said, I know. I was like, well, that's a little creepy, but he is the mailman, delivers my mail, right? And I asked him about his limp. And I said, you know what? Hey, could I pray for you? His name is Michael, right? I said, can I pray for you? Yeah. He said, okay. And I said, can I put my hand on you? And he's like, okay. <laughs> Now, here's what happened, right? So I put my hand on him and I just began to pray. And you know what I've discovered? I've discovered that when you pray for people, whatever you say is legal, right? They're already expecting you to do something religious, so you can just go for it. So I've put my hand on him and I'm just like, his name is Michael, right? Postman Michael. <laughs> I'm like, Father, I thank you that you love Michael so much. You died on the cross for him, Lord. And I pray right now, he just experienced your tangible love, your presence. I thank you that the word says, the Bible says that by your stripes, by those wounds on your back, he was healed. Yeah. I just release your healing power over him right now. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Wow. Amen. He's like, well, wow, thank you. And that was pretty much it. You know, well, we heard back a couple of weeks later that Michael has been completely healed. And yeah. he said, yes, it's because Ben prayed for me that day. What I had I yes. gave it to Michael freely. I'd received and freely I gave it. We'll be right back in just a moment. Aussie revivalist Ben and Jody Hughes are fulfilling God's mandate to pour out the oil of his presence and power to the nations. The Hughes travel around the world, releasing and equipping men and women for revival with miracles, signs, and wonders as they break through the heavenlies with prophetic worship and ministry. Through Poured Out Ministries, Ben and Jody provide training and equipping through the Revival School, online mentoring, worship, missions, and meetings and crusades. Jody Hughes will personally mentor you through a series of fully interactive live sessions in Mentor Me, an online mentoring program for women of all ages, designed to inspire and motivate you to pursue more of God. Faith in the midst of your real circumstances will be activated as you focus on God's voice speaking to you in creative, unusual, and everyday ways. Check out their social media pages, as well as their website, pouritout.org, where you can find more teaching, information, and all of their resources. Through Jody Hughes's book, The King's Decree, you'll learn to proclaim declarations that will release supernatural answers to your prayers. It's a very specific tool to help you use words to define your own history and future with God by speaking to the very fabric of your life, the spiritual realm, and the world around you. 
you will be given decrees and powerful prayers that will activate change and miracles. Discover divine strategies which will release new authority in your prayer life. Be given keys to equip you to partner with God and receive supernatural answers to the real circumstances in your life. This book is more than just words. It's the call to affect change. Go to pouritout.org and order your copy today. The King's Decree will stir up a hope where you need it most and faith for more of God. We always love being with you, Pour It Out family, as today we talk about what I have, I give to you. And that when we surrender our lives, who we are, our gifts, that God takes them, He multiplies them, and there's always increase. Amen. I love the story of the loaves and fishes. I think many of us do. And it's one of those stories that for me has become a, a life verse, a life story, because I've applied it in so many uh, situations in my own life. I want to read it to you because there's some really amazing keys about God bringing increase to our lives. Before I do that, listen to this verse again. Proverbs 11:24. The world of the generous gets larger and larger, and the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. I love that verse. I think it, it's in the message version, but I think it just sums things up brilliantly. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. Now keep that in mind as I read this story of the loaves and fishes. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and he healed their sick. As evening approaches, so there's a big large crowd, and as evening approached, the disciples came to Jesus and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so that they can go to the villages and buy for themselves something to eat. Now listen to Jesus' response. They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. I kind of like that. It's kind of like he says to us sometimes, God, what about this problem? Someone should do something about this. You do something about it. Wow. We have here only, now listen to them. This is the disciples' response to Jesus. You give them something to eat. You do something about it. You give them what you have. Their response is, Jesus, we have only five loaves of bread and two fish. Bring them here to me, Jesus said. Here's a key. Bring what you have to Jesus. Bring what you have. Bring even the stuff that you say, but I've only got this. I've only got such a small little voice, God. I've only just got a little bit of courage, God. I don't know. I might be able to go one step. Bring it here to me, Jesus said. Bring those loaves and fishes to me. And so the disciples bring the loaves, the loaves and fishes to him. They directed the people to sit down on the grass and Jesus taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks. He broke the loaves. He gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. Now the story goes on and we know that that day over 5,000 people ate from the tiny little bit that the disciples said, I've only got this. I want to say something to you, friend. Always, when we give our, I've only got this, when we bring the, this is all I have, when we bring our five loaves and two fish to the Lord, when we say thank you to Jesus, He always blesses what we have and then brings increase, always. It's counterintuitive because who thought, you know, and we know that those loaves and fishes came from a young little boy sitting in the crowd as well. This is what's even more amazing about this story. How did, you know, that young little boy, when he set out that day with his lunch, I bet he didn't know when he left home that day that his lunch was going to feed an entire crowd of over 5,000 people. I bet you don't know some days when you walk out the door that that little bit of strength that you think you have, that little bit of faith that you think you have, that little bit of money that you think you have, that little bit of compassion that you think you have can change someone's entire day when you look them in the eye and say, God bless you. 
You know life's going to get better. I bet you didn't know. I bet that little boy didn't know that he was about to be talked about for the rest of history. I bet you don't know some days that that little bit of hope that you have can transform someone's life and be talked about for all eternity from heaven, from God and all the angels. Hmm. What's the little bit of something that we think we have in our life? The key here is you might think it's little, but in God's economy, it can feed thousands. You know what's interesting is there must have been other people there with food. Right? Yeah. He can't have been the only one in the crowd of 5,000 that had brought something with him. Yeah. Right. And so it's not we don't hear. Oh, and another person gave an apple and that apple was multiplied 5,000 times. Yeah. Right. And it's, I'm sure there was other opportunities. But the point, of course, is that he gave. And like you say, that that little bit that what he did have, he gave yeah. and that ended up feeding thousands. I know. Right. And we're still talking about it today. It's incredible. Right. Yeah. It reminds me of our journey in revival, we had a revival breakout in our church, as many of you know, the Pineapple Revival. And I want to be real. Can I just have a vulnerable moment with you? I want to be real. We felt like we had loaves and fishes at the beginning of when revival was breaking out. And the truth of it is, that is all we had. We only had loaves and fishes. We didn't have all the money to even rent the building for the first week that we were housing people in. And by the end of the first week, when it was extending, we were like, God, we need a bigger building. And how are we going to pay for this? And what the rent was for one week suddenly became the rent for one night. We had loaves and fishes. And it's not just about money. Sometimes when you're seeing the crowds come and you're there and you're like, this is glorious. This is the most amazing thing, seeing families come into the presence of God and, and being restored and, and kids who'd not walked with God for years, suddenly coming back to God. Mm. All to say, sometimes, you know, let me be real, you stand there and you're like, God, do I have what it takes? Have I got enough for this? Do I have enough faith to keep this moving along? Have I got what I need? And God would constantly say to us, Bring your loaves and fishes. Bring your loaves and fishes. And I want to tell you something. We saw God take our loaves and fishes and literally feed the thousands. <laughs> night after night after night. And it's not just about our loaves and fishes. It was everyone's loaves and fishes. But I want you to hear my heart. God's going to take your loaves and fishes, mm -hmm. the little that we think we have, and he feeds the many with it. Mm. You know, it's it's funny and this is kind of a funny thing to share on here. But in the middle of that revival, God started to talk to us about media yeah. even. And, you know, all we had at the time is like, I want you to start broadcasting and things like that. Yeah. All we had at the time, I think, was like an iPhone four or five. We had a selfie stick and we literally gaffer taped the selfie stick to a pillar and yeah. started broadcasting the revival. Well, that was what we had. That was our loaves and fishes. Yeah. And it's funny because today we're sitting here talking about loaves and fishes and the revival. And right now here we're in a studio, there's cameras, there's lights, there's amazing crew, all of that kind of stuff. And, you know, that's that's one of our cool stories about giving your loaves and fishes. What's in your hand? What have you got to give? Yeah. And it may be just stepping out with a promise that God has given you or stepping out with uh, extension of your business or believing God to reach your neighbor. Believe in God to reach your family. But as we give our loaves and fishes, our strength, our hopes, our gifts, our finances, God takes all of them and he brings increase to them. I remember we got a word. Now this is, I'm just going to be real with you again, because is there any other way? Uh, I remember we got a word during the beginning of revival breaking out. And, you know, we used to often say revival is often more practical than people think because God is breaking out and miracles are happening. And honestly, I don't want to underplay any of that. It was the most glorious, incredible time ever. But there's still practical things that need to happen, like cleaning the toilets, setting up the chairs, cleaning up after people, making sure there's room for everyone to park their car and come and all the stuff, right? The logistical stuff. And add to that, just making sure you're there day after day after day after day as people are being revived and, and their lives are being set on fire for God. And so in the midst of that, when it was like, God, have, have we got the energy for this? Have we got what it takes? Do we have everything we need? And again, God's saying to, me, to us, bring your loaves and fishes. 
and we got this word where a minister rang us up and he said, you know, guys, as you surrender your lives right now, as you give your loaves and fishes to the midst of what God's asking you to do, you're going to live off this for the next 20 years of your life. Now, that was a personal word that I'm sharing with you right now. But I want to tell you something, friend, there's a key in this. Because when God's asking you to surrender loaves and fishes, and our loaves and fishes are different for all of us, but when God's asking you to surrender loaves and fishes, he always remembers, he always brings increase. I want to tell you something. Sometimes we look at doors that God has opened for us and people wonder, how did that door open? I want to tell you something. I know how that door opened. It was those moments, those private moments, where God said, will you give me your loaves and fishes again? Will you surrender it all, all over again? Can I speak to your heart, friends? God's calling all of us to say, what you have, give it to me. Who you are, put it on the altar. Watch your loaves and fishes, put them in my hand and watch me bless them and bring increase to them because the world of the generous gets larger and larger. Wow. So friends, what I have, I wanna give you today. If you haven't given your life to Jesus, I wanna invite you right now to surrender yeah. your life to him and make him your Lord, make him your savior. Right, it starts by just praying a really simple prayer. Would you just pray this with me right now? Just yeah. say it out loud. Just say this, just say, Jesus, Jesus. I give you my life. Yeah. Be my Lord. Yeah. Be my savior. Jesus. Please forgive me for my sin. I receive your forgiveness yes. right now. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And you know what? I also, I want to release healing over you. I want to release breakthrough and deliverance yeah. over you as well right now. Before we do that, I want to encourage you. If you just prayed that prayer, I want you to go to our website and just send us a message. Say, hey, I said yes to Jesus. All right, we wanna pray, we wanna pray. Everything that God has put on the inside of us, this, these miracles and this deliverance and just His presence and power, I wanna speak over you right now. So yeah. Father, we thank you for our brothers and we yeah. thank you for our sisters. Yes. God, and just like Peter and James, they released that healing power from in the yeah. inside of them. We speak healing over you today. I command healing to come into your body in the yeah. name of Jesus. Every person who needs breakthrough and deliverance, yeah. I release deliverance. I command yeah. every demonic spirit to loose you right now in Jesus' mighty name. And God, I ask for that fresh oil yeah. of your presence to yeah. come and fill our family today in yeah. the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah, revival fire. We speak revival fire that you would be revived, refreshed and filled up. We wow. release it over you right now. Pour it out!